Great. So we are now recording. Uh, thank you again for everyone that has joined. Welcome to episode two of our Hometown Heroes um, Spotlight. Right now we have our guest speaker, Mr. Kenny Fan, um, who is a great friend of mine. I've known him for many years and um, he went to St. Augustine with me um, and is a year younger. For those of you that do not know me, my name is Tony Fox. I graduated from St. Augustine, which is now the Catholic Academy of Bridgeport in 2010. Um, after that, I went to Fairfield Prep and graduated in 2014 and then went to Fordham, graduated there. <laughs> and now I am an engineer and a board member uh, for our school systems um, for the Catholic Academy. So um, I'm very excited for this and um, I hope you all uh, that watch this, parents, students, and our community at large, um, you know, are able to take something away from this and learn from Kenny. Um, he has great experiences um, in Connecticut, Penn State, and international as well. Um, so I hope that he shares some interesting stories. Uh, but without further ado, Kenny, wanted to introduce you. Um, and I wanted to ask the first question, you know, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, we are very excited for this. Um, and thank you again for being here. Tony Fox, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. First and foremost, thank you to you. Thank you to the Diocese of Bridgeport for inviting me to come share this platform with you. Um, I am honored to be here and be able to um, help my community through my experiences and, you know, talking about it and if I can help one at least one kid's you know life change you know that'll be more than what I could wish for uh, a little back about me uh, again my name is Kenny Fan. for those of you that do not know me um, I was born and grew up in the Republic of the Congo spent most of my childhood down there and uh, when I was about 12 years old my mother um, wanted me to have more opportunities be exposed to a better education system so she made the decision to have my siblings and I fly all the way down here uh, to the United States. And that was about 2009. And that's how I started my adventure with uh, CAB. And uh, I started there as a seventh grader with my sister right behind me as a sixth grader and my older brother who was in high school. So both my sister and I both started at CAB together. And uh, fun fact, uh, we did not speak any English. <laughs> come first day of school i'll always remember that first day freezing nervous and uh it, it was definitely intense i remember one of the first teachers that ever said a word to me was mrs donnelly and i didn't know what she was saying at all so i, I just popped the hand gesture and uh that, that's how that's how i got started you know my parents threw me in, in, in school and said you'll, you'll figure it out and i thought it was the most outrageous thing ever because again I had spent the last six years in the Congo learning English, and all I knew was how to say hello and how are you. <laughs> I remember uh, when I got off the plane, somebody said hi to me, and I looked at my mom, and I was like, what is hi? And she <laughs> said, say hi back, and I'm like, what does that mean? She's like, hello, and I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> so um, that's about that how awesome. I got in a cab, and uh, uh, again, I did not know any English, and uh, so very soon after that, um, my parents urged me to stay at their after school program and that's how I came across you. You know, that's how I met Tony and uh, our friendship just went from there. And uh, after that, I went through seventh grade and let me be honest with you, I passed seventh grade with a D in music. That's how bad it was. <laughs> you know, it, it, it was not the greatest year, not my proudest time, but you know, it, again, it's challenging from a kid of coming course. from a totally different environment, different culture and you know thrown into a totally different environment and different culture and different language of you course. know a little bit hard to identify with other kids and uh not knowing how to communicate with them and um but you try your best you know you try your best comes eighth grade i uh, came back and at that point in time I, I understood a little bit more english and i started practicing my english even though i was kind of a little nervous you know i, I hated being that kid you know you say a word and everyone's like wow you have an accent where are you from 
and you don't even know you don't even know how to explain where you're from because you can't really speak English that well. You know, you know it, it was that kind of intensity. And as as a 12, 13 year old kid, you're just worried about being cool, about fitting in. So to some degree, it was very it was very challenging. But uh, you pushed through it, and uh, that's what I did. And uh, after graduating eighth grade, I decided to go to to Notre Dame Fairfield. And uh, that's where I spent my next four years. And there, I play. I play sports. Awesome. I try to get. I try to get more involved in things. I try to socialize more with people, to try to better myself, and also, you know, try to, you know, also to communicate with the community around me. Because I figured, you know, there was, there was no way I would make an improvement on myself by just being shy and by staying. There. And after my four years in Notre Dame, I decided so, that. I quick question for you. Yes, sir. So you chose Notre Dame. What what made you choose Notre Dame um, over Fairfield Prep? Because I tried to get you Ooh. to go to Fairfield Prep. <laughs> uh, that, that was a big one. That was a big one. For, again, for those of you guys that are watching, um, Tony is a really great friend of mine. I consider Tony my brother. And uh, him being ahead of me, he was kind of uh, a mentor in a form for me. Um, growing up, you know, trying to, you know, learn my way around the environment and uh, he chose to go to field for prep and uh i was very hesitant about that from the get-go but my whole my entire family who loves tony wanted me to attend field for prep as well but uh i don't know i was very uh i i i don't even know how to explain it um after care after doing some careful research also through the help of the school you know teachers <laughs> and advisors um you know they exposed us as a class to a lot of different options and from there, I was able to get some help, a guidance as to, you know, what might be the best fit for me rather than just, you know, because you're really close friend or this, you know, did this and that, you know, mm -hmm. you got to do the exact same thing. You know, this is where it all started for me, you know, just because one person did this and that doesn't mean it's also your path, of you course. know. Of so I made the decision to go to Notre Dame because of that. Um, I ended up applying to only two um, high schools, which was Colby and uh, Notre Dame. And Notre Dame was my number one choice. Once I got accepted in there, best day of my life at the time, you know. <laughs> and uh, I attended again Notre Dame for four years, which ended up being a great experience for me. I did a lot, did a lot of things in there. You know, awesome. played soccer, soccer for them in the varsity team all four years, which was amazing. Mm. I loved that experience. And then came my college days. You know, where do I want to go? Again, my brother went to UConn. You went to Fordham. And uh, I have a lot of, I had a lot of different options, but I wanted to branch out personally, um, given what I wanted to do for myself, um, the experience I wanted to learn, the lot, lot of knowledge I wanted to gain for myself. As a young kid coming from outside the country into this country, I felt that I would gain more by going somewhere unknown and exposing myself to the, you know, to the life out there. I believe that, you know, experience is one of the, one of the most efficient ways to gain knowledge, you know. And uh, so that's how I decided to go to Penn State because Penn State, I knew Penn State had a really great program in my field of study. And I ended up studying energy business and finance. And uh, they were, thank you. I never, they have a really great program in that. And uh, I spent five years at Penn State University. And uh, this May, I actually graduated. And currently, congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. But currently, I'm completing my very, very last undergraduate course. And um, Upon completion of this course, I plan to immerse myself in the energy industry and uh, get out there and get some experience going and be the man I don't want to be. That's awesome. That's awesome. Great to hear. So here I just um, hope you guys can see it well. I have a quick slide um, summarizing uh, the schools that Kenny attended. Um, very proud of him, you know, as a, as a fellow alum uh, to, to see you grow up, you know, and, and to Thank really... You coming here from another country, um, you know, in, in seventh grade, which is, which is huge, not speaking any English, um, yet graduating, you know, from middle school, from St. Augustine, um, you know, and to see where you are now, um, you know, you are very multi, multicultural, um, you know, bilingual, uh, you know, well-traveled, um, and as a friend, I'm very proud of you for, you know, everything that, that you have accomplished thus far. And I know that you will be a 
great beacon of hope for um, our younger students. And I'm, again, thankful for you during this time. Um, we have a quick note from one of our fellow board members. Uh, we have our annual golf outing on August 10th. Um, so if you are in town, um, you know, I don't know if where you'll be working by that time, but um, for those of you that are watching as well, annual golf outing August 10th, uh, we will honor Mrs. Donnelly. Um, this was a, you know, reschedule from our original gala event that was supposed to happen um, early this spring, but due to COVID-19, we had to cancel for obvious and health reasons. Um, so just wanted to say that and uh, thank you, Kenny. Um, and it is at the Country Club of Fairfield. So for those of you that are watching August 10th, Country Club of Fairfield, our annual golf outing, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to um, um, our information um, email through our website. Great. <clears throat> so what's next for Mr. Kenny Fan? <laughs> uh, get out there, you know. Yep. Get mm -hmm. out there again. Immerse yourself. Get as as much knowledge and you know as possible, you know, to navigate around my environment. Become a very resource resourceful ind individual, you know, so that I can again I can be able to put put myself in a position where I can give give back to my community, my family, and have a positive impact. Because um, we never know what might happen tomorrow, you know. Um, today, for instance, you and I, we're sitting right here, we're talking, we're in a position where we can do so many things. And Correct. given my life experience where I came from, um, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't have this opportunity <laughs> to, you know, just sit here like this and have a discussion. And um, so, again, whenever I can, every day that I wake up feeling healthy, able to see the sun, and obviously, um, everyone has the personal goal of, you know, succeeding in life individually but also of course. A, an important thing is to you know also try to leave an, an impact you know um wherever you go and whatever you do affect somebody's life in whichever way possible that you can um again coming from another country as a seventh grader at age 12 not knowing how to speak any english um i could sit here and name a lot of people who um, really influenced me in many ways i mean many very positive manner um, who helped help change my life. And to this day, I've maintained great relationships with these guys. And, you know, this relationship that I created, there's a couple people with whom, you know, it was only this middle school, my two-year period at Gab, you know, this relationship I built with them, you know, took, came along with me through high school and through my college days. I mean, there'd be times where I'm in college and, you know, I think back to those and, you know, it'll help me you know, excel and, you know, think back of this moment, this person did this, you know, how just their interaction with you, at least mm -hmm. with me, you know, encouraged me and prompted me, you know, to do better, to do good, because, you know, here's awesome. somebody that went out of the way to help you out, and, you know, and why shouldn't you do the same? I believe we have an obligation to not only, you know, do something for ourselves, but if you have the means, you know, to do something for your community. And, you know, we're not talking necessarily about, you know, go out there and give out a million dollars, you know, but, you know, again, <laughs> if you can sit there and help, help, you know, again, a young, a young, a young kid, you know, um, who's trying to figure out what they want to do with their lives. I remember my junior in high school, you know, I've always wanted to be a, up until then. My idea was I want to be a businessman. Mm -hmm. But then what do you define a businessman? You know, what is a businessman? You know, and I didn't know. Very I just broad. thought a business businessman is just somebody that makes money and I want to make money, you know, <laughs> as a businessman. And from college, you got to speak, you know, you can come in as an undecided or you pick a major. And I don't know, I was just like business. I, I don't know what kind of business I want to do, just business. And uh, <laughs> that was, again, that was an eye opener for me because, you know, you have this broad idea and stuff. And again, my experience with other people helped me realize, you know, what I wanted to do. My experience mm -hmm. also as a seventh and eighth grader, so many people that helped me, again, they went out of the way to help me make sure, you know, here's this kid that can't even speak any English. You know, again, I, I know I passed. I mean, I know I, I can. Only, I remember I passed music with a D because I got home at the end of the semester, and my mom was like, "How do you get a D in music?" <laughs> and, and, and I sat there, and I, I was like, "I don't know." She's and then again, it was one of those things, you know. But again, um, 
those experiences have uh, traveled with me throughout, you know, for the last 10 years with me up until today. So that's why I'm here and uh, would like you know, to do the same thing. So when you ask, you know, what I plan to do in the future, again, excel not only in my personal life, but also wherever I go, be able to impact my surrounding. And if I can go back, you know, and then someplace mm -hmm. in, impact in one way or another, help out, you know, people around me, you know, I'll be more than glad to do so. I feel if I'm in a position to do so, it is my responsibility to, you know, go ahead and, you know, make that change and, you know, leave, create a legacy for yourself in, in another manner. And, awesome. uh, you know, also help bring up the people around you with you rather than just yourself as you go along. Of course, of course. Good man. Well, thank and you for doing that, you know. For, I'm trying to be know. like you in a way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing that for yourself and, you know, for our community. Um, one thing you said, spoke, you know, um, resonated with me. You said you were at CAB for two years. Right. So in that two-year period, what was the biggest, you know, value or lesson that you learned during that time that, that still sticks with you today? Um, mind over matter. Hmm. Again, going deeper into it, um, just the thought process as a 12 year old kid, you know, we, again, we're, we're transitioning from being these little kids into teenagers and, you know, we really worry about what the environment thinks of us, what other people thinks of us and uh, that ability to just be able to, you know, and it's also hard as a young kid to, you know, have goals for yourself, you know, at 12, you know, you just, you just want to go home and play your video games you know have all that fun and, and all that but um the ability when you come across a challenge um how to set yourself in a manner that you know i'm gonna push towards this and i'm gonna um, go ahead and you know try the best of my ability again in my experience that was you know transitioning from another country to a new country and my ability to learn Eng english as fast as i could you know and uh I hate, like I mentioned earlier, I hated being that kid. Oh my God, you have an accent, where are you from? <laughs> I remember being in math class and uh, there'd be a question asked by the professor and somebody mm. raised their hand and they picked the kid that didn't raise their hand, AKA me. And uh, <laughs> the answer happens to be three and I'll just say free and people start giggling behind me because of how I said it. You know, and that kind of bring, bring you down and get you to kind of close up in your little bubble, but again, like I'm saying, mind, mind over matter. What is important to you? You know, what do you want to do with yourself? You know, what are you willing to do to get to what you're trying to get at? And for me, it was that, you know, I, I was, I told myself, you know, that'll happen, but you know what, go ahead and do what you have to do and, you know, you know, get better at it. And I worked at it all the time, time and again. One of my pr proudest moments in uh, middle school was uh, eighth grade. And again, not to brag at all, this is just, no, nope. one of those things sure? that as, as a 13, 14 year old kid, you know, that made me feel good about myself that here it is, your hard work is paying off. I remember we had an English exam and, uh, and out of my entire class, I ended up being the one with the highest grade. And uh, the professor came out and said, he said, wow, you know, you guys did so and so, but guess who got the highest grade? And, you know, a couple of people were named and then it was like the professor said my name and I was just like, what? Me, sure. Me. <laughs> and, you know, and I remember I went home that day. I'm like, Mom, guess who got the highest grade on the, on the English exam? Me, you know. And uh, again, that was just for me, you know, something that showed me, hey, your hard work is paying off, you know. And also getting out that bubble of, uh, you know, being shy to speak, being shy to talk, um, and actually, you know, trying to improve it and getting better at it. And, you know, and I, 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 that's how I got to it. Get mind over matter. What matters to, you know, what? what's there physically or your environment right around you, they might just be there to slow you down. But if you really want it really bad in here, nothing will stop you at the end of the day. It's just a matter of time and how much application you put into it. I agree. I agree. And you don't, yeah, yeah, in your own way, I'm sure you can relate to it, you know, with football and school and how tough that could have, that was for you, but trying to maintain the good grades and, you know, playing the sports that you love and, you know, family time and all that, you know, in a way, we all, we all have our own tribulations in our own ways. But again, in here, if you really want it, how bad you want it, mm -hmm. not many things can really stop you at all. Exactly, exactly. One quick example for myself is, you know, um, my career path, I'm an engineer, but I hate math. <laughs> right. Oh. You know, I hate math. I could do it all, 
but I hate it, <laughs> you know? So thank, thank goodness for calculators out there. You know, I don't have to do everything by hand anymore. <laughs> I know, all the I... new and you know, all the new engineering software is, is, uh, very helpful. You know, it helps me streamline my process. Um, you know, so that's just a, another quick example for you. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Hey, um, also wanted to encourage the individuals that are on this call um, or this webinar to feel free to ask any sort of questions um, in the chat box um, or in the Q&A box. We will um, tend to all of the questions um, most likely at the end of the webinar. Uh, so please just stay tuned. Feel free to ask anything um, to the guest speaker, Kenny, or to myself, and we will be more than happy to um, answer your questions. So Kenny, um, I know you're young, right? You know, a recent graduate from Penn State, um, well accomplished, you know, handsome, young, young man. <laughs> um, you, know, you don't have to flatter me that much. Now. <laughs> um, so what is your greatest accomplishment? You know, I know you're young, you know, 22, 23 years old, but I think it'll be very important for um, the young individuals watching this um, to hear what you consider your greatest accomplishment thus far? Ah, that's, that's a very interesting question. You know, I, um, I'm going to go out and just say this, that um, I, don't, I don't think that I have one single greatest accomplishments. You know, I, I, I've mm -hmm. had so, so much experience in, um, in, the, in the last couple of years and um, a lot of challenges. And uh, there's so many things that come right off the top of my head that I consider to have been up there. Up there. But uh, I, I will go and say, one of my most, you know, dearest accomplishments will be have will be the fact that you know, I this past May, you know, earned my bachelor's degree in energy business and finance from you know Penn State. Uh, and why 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 is that? Because again, um, the reason for me coming to this country in the first place was to you know find a better education, create bigger opportunities for myself, and uh, I really worked hard to get there, and. Um, I was not going forward, you know, I was not your average uh, straightest student, you know, you know, got all these good grades and got into the, uh, uh, into your typical great high school and then goes to this great college. You know, I really worked hard at it. No, I got, right? I, I got a lot. Right? Don't you know. sell yourself short. Hey, no, 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 I, no, I'm not at all. You know, I'm just speaking, you know, for other, other mm -hmm. kids out there because growing up, that's what I felt like. I felt like, you know, well, all these guys get all A's and stuff. I don't get A's all the time. And again, in my personal experience, you know, I was that kid that got a lot of B's and C's, struggled. Whenever I got an A, that was just, mom, I'm going now on vacation. I got an A. You know? <laughs> and, uh, Time to celebrate. <laughs> right. And uh, again, and you, you really work hard at it. You really try hard because to be times, you, know, you really try hard. And throughout middle school and high school, I did fairly well for myself. And um, college was a really, really tough part of my uh, educational path because it really challenged me, you know. It really made me think, um, is this really what I want to do? You know, you spend a lot of time, you know, staying awake to study, mm -hmm. you know, to learn your material um, because, you know, a lot of it comes back, you know, with goes with you going forward when you go out there and try to apply yourself. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, you know, and you and I, as my good friend, like, I'm sure you can recall moments where you know, I've come to you and, I'm, and I told you, hey, Tony. I don't know if college is my path anymore, you know, I might have to look at different paths, but at the end of the day, you know, after a lot of thinking, you know, I thought about what I wanted to do for myself and how important it meant to me to earn this for myself and, you know, for the people around me as well. You know, you'll, there, there, there have been a lot of tough times we've all gone through, you know, our own personal tough times and, you know, college, you know, was rough for me in a manner, you know, academically you know there was a lot of tough courses i went through and um i uh for a quick example this was something i shared with you last week um i had passed you know i took there's this one course that i took and i took it four times here at penn state wow and it's one of it's one of three courses in my entire penn state career that you know those made me think a lot about whether or not i wanted to stay in school <laughs> And again, I took that full time. And again, according to Penn State, once you take a class a third time, and if you don't pass it with a certain grade, you cannot take it there anymore. So I had to go, you know, I had to do a lot of um, emailing, 
um, emailing, you know, the department, uh, filing a petition letter to be allowed mm -hmm. to take it a fourth time. And finally, this fourth time, I actually passed the course with an A+. Plus, you know, and I was wow. big too. Congratulations. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, and the hard work paid off. So having, at the end of the day, um, seeing that, you know, here I am, you know, your name plastered up, Kenny Fan, bachelor's degree <laughs> here, you know. It was just like, oh, I did it, you know. Of course, yep. After all this, you know, I, I was this close from <laughs> giving up and doing something else, you know. And uh, I knew that's, that's, a, that's something I wanted to do, something I had to go through. But, you know, sometimes things get really tough that um, you really start second-guessing yourself. And I mm -hmm. went through that situation of second-guessing myself. And I also knew how important it meant to my mother, you know, who worked so hard to get me to, you know, go to these good schools, you know, take care of me and my siblings, you know, create all these opportunities for us. So um, um, with that said, you know, having earned that degree, and I remember because of this whole pandemic, you know, we weren't all able to get together. So um, again, she wasn't able to be present physically. And uh, so we had to FaceTime. And I remember um, we FaceTimed her and uh, she was all dressed up, makeup, <laughs> lipstick. And mind you, she's at home all alone, you know, no one's there. And uh, I don't, I can't remember the last time I'd seen her that happy. I mean, I've seen my mom happy plenty of times. She's happy with her life. But uh, just, you know, looking at her and seeing how happy, you know, you know, your own hard work, not only, you know, you know, what you did for yourself, but also what you did for other people. Mm -hmm. and or how happy she was and uh, how happy I had just made her by accomplishing that. And uh, it, 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 it's just an indescribable feeling, you know. You That's can't, awesome. those are just life moments that you can't, you can't, um, how can I say it? You can't, you can't measure, you know, there's just, there's just those things that, wow, once you get there, it's wow, this is what I worked for for so long, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I really tried and I tried and I almost gave up and here it is. And uh, it, it, it was an amazing <laughs> feeling that I can't describe. And that's why to this day, um, it's something very dear to my heart. Because you, of all people, have known how many times I've come up to you, I've asked and said to you, Tony, I don't know how you did that, but I, I don't know about me. I don't know about this anymore. I might have to take a year off, you know. Mm -hmm. It's pretty mm -hmm. tough. And I, I know for a lot of young kids out there, you know, uh, for those of you guys watching and for those of you guys that might, that might be watching later, you know, a lot of you guys are going to go through similar experiences where, you know, you're going to come, come through a certain time in your life where things are really challenging and you're not sure if that's what you want to do anymore. But really take some time to yourself, you know, think really hard, you know, what do you want to do with your life? You know, what will it take to get there? And, you know, how much are you willing to do? Again, I took this one course four times and don't get me wrong, taking it the fourth time, you know, I was very ashamed about it. I felt my petition form and I'm, I'm thinking these guys probably think this kid is just something else. But, you know, getting that grade at the end of the course, you know, you know, finally passing it. And, you know, it was, you know, it put all that shame to rest for me. It was yeah. like I was at it. I failed. You know, I fell on my feet on my back. I got back up again and I failed again and I got back up again and I fell and I got back up and I finally, you know, did it. You know, again, those are feelings that you just cannot describe and, you know, rewards that just can't be, again, it's just indescribable. Yeah, and uh, that's why, you know, earning this degree is a <clears throat> very, very, very important um, accomplishment of, of mine up to this point in my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, just to dive off of that, um, thank you for sharing and, you know, um, um, getting deep into, you know, how you feel and, and really just expressing yourself. Um, I, I think that's very important for young individuals to do nowadays. Um, you know, everything is almost instant at our fingertips, but um, it's, it's, it's great that, you know, we have this time to, to sit and have a great discussion, you know, around your accomplishments and, and, you know, acknowledge the failures, but, you know, see how you've grown from them. And, you know, now you're very successful um, and you're, you're a hometown hero. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, do have one question um, since you were just speaking about college um, from another board member, Mr. Dennis Boyd. Um, he asks, are you, planning on returning to the Bridgeport area? What field of work are you pursuing? Um, can you please answer those? I am, again, I studied energy business and finance and uh, my ultimate goal is to work in the energy industry. That being said, um, 
I would prefer to work with solar related products, but you know, anything that has to do with renewable or um, anything of that, of that um, genre, that's something I'm, I'm uh, looking to dive into um, mm. in terms of, will I be coming back to Bridgeport? Well, that depends of, uh, on where my job takes me, you know, um, again, fresh out of uh, college uh, with this pandemic kind of slowing down the hiring process. Of course. You know, it's kind of all up in the air right now. So um, the main goal is to, uh, you know, get out there, gain some, gain some solid experience and, and immerse myself <clears throat> and uh, gain some knowledge. So uh, it's a possibility, but it's not a definite uh, yes, just yet. Yeah, you know, it's uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll go where the job takes us now. You know, okay. we've gone through our tribulations of uh, taking all these exams. <laughs> now, you know, um, let's see where this job takes us and uh, what we can do going forward. And uh, once I get to that position where you know I've uh, earned enough credits in my own field of work, and I can make my own decision as to where I want to move and what I want to do with myself, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, you know, where I want to go, um, that's uh. That's, that's when you'll come back to Bridgeport. When I can do something, <laughs> obviously. But don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Just like I'm here with you right now, um, you know, Bridgeport will always be um, something very important to me, uh, one way or another, <laughs> wherever I go with my, with my life. Um, again, being in the position that I, I plan on and want to put myself in, I always, always want to come back and, uh, you know, help in any way that I can, my community. Um, and uh, again, do something positive and uh, help you know the people around me and the people in our community also move up in their own lives. As That's a community. Awesome. Well, we'll be here whenever you're ready. Uh, we'll always hey, welcome you with open hey, arms. Hey, you know, I won't be too far. You know, I'll, I'll make sure to come back every now and then. I still come back every now and then. Yep. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come back, visit, say hi to everyone. And uh, I've always tried to come back to CAB at least once of uh, you know at least once a year come and say hi, even though I know now the administration and uh, it's kind of changed there, you know, it's not the same people that were there when you and I were there. Of course. But, uh, and it's kind of like the, you know, the, the get go from, you know, that's where I started. That's where I was born, mm -hmm. you know, the cab, so in that Bridgeport community. So, yeah. That's awesome. Thank you for answering that question. Thank you, um, so, you know, you, you touched on the point that, you know, Bridgeport is your home. Um, during that time, I'm, I'm sure you've met, you know, some some great influencers, some great mentors in your life. Um, can you briefly talk about, you know, what sort of lessons that those mentors have given you? Um, you know, you've, you've mentioned previous themes of mind over matter and your perseverance um, for yourself, but also in your academic um, life as well. Um, so what what are some of the things that a mentor has said or done for you that really changed your perspective love love for you know one another and mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be somebody that you know on a personal level like i said you know i was helped a lot <clears throat> by people i almost knew nothing about you know um up until that point in my in my head um you know i'll do anything for somebody that i know anything for a close friend but if i do not know you i mean shoot you, you might have to be on your own at that point and uh, again, when I was talking earlier about the fact that, you know, so many things that I learned from these people um, have come with me up until this point. And uh, again, love, that, that, that'll be one of the biggest things, you know, you learn how to be kind at home and all, but actually witnessing and experience, experiencing that on that, you know, at, and, uh, as a seventh and eighth grader, you know, what people, you know, the, the extent to which certain people will go to help you out, ex succeed, you know, and in my particular case where, you know, it was kind of, it was significantly different because here's a kid that doesn't speak English. How do you even communicate with this kid, this kid, mm. you know? How do you help them succeed in their own life? You know, coming from a different culture, you know, these people really, really went far and beyond to try to comprehend, you know, where, where I came from, you know, on a life I was used to ask, I asked if they try to ask the right questions. You know, <clears throat> I remember my very first Christmas, um, his name is Mr. McGinnis. Um, Mr. McGinnis brought this big, big garbage bag to my mom. And I'm thinking, how dare does this man bring garbage to my mom to get rid of, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I, I remember thinking, I, I, this man must be very disrespectful, you know? And, and, you know, she puts the bag in her trunk and we ask her, you know, what is that? And he's like, hey, don't, worry, don't worry about it. And, you know, at that point, you know, at that point in time, I thought Mr. McGinnis was a cool person. And after that, I'm like, I don't like this man. 
<laughs> and this was right before Christmas, uh, right before we went on break for Christmas, actually. And uh, come Christmas time, wake up in the morning, all of these toys in front of us. And she goes ahead and told us, you know, here on you know, a lot of these things, remember that bag? I'm like, yes. You know, Mr. McGinnis did all that, you know, him and other, you know, um, teachers around, you know, they got together and they decided to do this for you guys. You know, got, got a little wee and, uh, you know, a bunch of toys. And to me, it was just like, wow, you know, these guys don't even know me and they went that far to do something for me. You know, wow, that, yeah, that's awesome. Love, love is really a big thing. So now, you know, even here now, um, when I see somebody around that I can help, in any way that I can, I do so. Um, mm -hmm. A quick example of that would be um, on my spare time every now and then, I try, I Uber, you know, just make some extra money, you know, having multiple streams of income doesn't hurt, you know. And uh, I picked up this now. <laughs> you know, and uh, I picked up this one guy uh, who had gone grocery shopping and uh, he used to work with me years ago, years ago. And uh, I picked him up and I told him, hey, you know, in the future, mm -hmm. rather than much money, you know, to go to the store and back, you know, here's my phone number. And, uh, you know, if you need help, I'll take you to your destination. You do your grocery shopping and I'll drive you back, you know, and free of charge saves you some money, especially with this whole pandemic going on. And, uh, Good the man. guy, he thanked me a lot. He said it was very helpful. He ended up telling me he spent about 40, $50 round trip just to go just on the, the his rides going to and from the store. Oh, wow. And, I was like, if I can help change, and it was only a 15 minute drive, but again, with Uber, the rates can be a little high depending on where you live. And and again, that, that was something for me that I was like, listen, again, I live not too far from you. And if I can help you out, and now we're really close people, we're really close friends. <laughs> you know, we hang out every now and then. And uh, whenever he has something going on at his own house, a little get together, he invites me over. And, you know, and through that, you, also, you know, I got to meet more people um, you know, interact with other people, you know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. learn from them in a manner, you know, how they've gone through uh, on this, you know, whole entire pandemic, how they're dealing with it. You know, we sharing our experiences and helping each other out. And, you know, it's just, those are things that, you know, had I not learned back then, I don't think I would have had the thought to even offer, you know, to, you know, help this guy out. And of let course. Them, it's opened so many doors for me going <clears> forward. You know, got to meet all these people and, you know, you know, our discussions are very healthy and, you know, nurturing. And uh, yeah, so I would say definitely love. And awesome. I, I also uh, didn't hate you because I remember the first time I met you, I thought, well, he's this big kid. He probably thinks he's all cool and bad. So let me try to be <laughs> all mean with him. And uh, you turned out to be a pretty nice guy. And, you know, I thought to myself, <laughs> again, that was just my mentality as a 12 year old, you know, of course, yeah. be cool and try to be tough. Don't let this big kid. I remember you sitting there trying to read with me no idea what you were saying, but I just told myself, just act cool. You know, don't let them, you know, don't, don't let them try to intimidate you or anything. And here we are now, we're just a good friend. So, yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. I think I remember that. Yeah. Um, I think you were just looking at me, nodding your head. <laughs> you I know? Did, yeah. Yeah. Sure you were asking me whether I actually got it, and, and I would just say, yeah, but I really did not. You know, I, 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 had to, I had to keep my composure and act cool, you know, be the cool kid. And uh, also that goes, you know, that goes with saying that um, for all the young kids out there, you know, don't strain so much with, on the idea of trying to be cool and fit in, mm. you know, um, you really, really want to work on yourself, be yourself, be open, you know, love one another, care for one another as well, you know, as well as, you know, yourself. So in, in, in doing so, you know, you really mm -hmm. work hard um, as, you know, as you go forward, working, helping each other going forward. Because you know, those relations you create as you know, as young as you know, a lot of these you know, these kids are out there. Um, you know, those some a lot of these relationships are you know are going to be relationships that you know once you become an adult, those are going to be the relationships you will treasure the most in your life. Because once you become an adult, it's really hard to really create relationship, a meaningful relationship. You know, that's generally that's very genuine in which you both learn from each other and can nurture one another. Mm -hmm. And so that's very important. So to step back for a second, try not to be the school kid. I'm not going to go talk to that person because I'm too cool for that, you know, or, you know, I'm too, you know, or I don't want to do it again. It's just like I thought with you. And, um, you know, just get out there and open up to one another and uh, try to learn from one another and try to push forward with one another rather than just mm -hmm. on your own. That, that's very important. That's very right. important. Definitely. 
That's awesome. So, so just wanted to touch upon a point um, mm -hmm. regarding the the love that you mentioned. Um, right. You know, receiving um, Christmas gifts. You know, your first year while you were a student at Cab, um, mm -hmm. you said that you know that shocked you. Um, did you continue to see and and to feel that love from the faculty um, oh. during your two year period? Yes, 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 yes. Again. Um, I want to speak for, you know, every single faculty member that was there at that time, you know, I want to say thank you, you know, thank you on my behalf and on behalf of my sister as well, who's in here watching right now. Um, you guys very much, you helped us a lot, you know, as well, not just myself personally, but also, also the kids around us, you know, at the time, these are things we don't realize because we're so young, but you know, now years later that we, when we look back at it, you know, we really think to ourselves, these guys really went above and beyond to, you know, try their best to help us make, made it feel like home, you know, again, coming in, feeling shy, not knowing, you know, completely the environment, you know, the environment, you know, having other kids around and thinking, oh, here's this kid that can't speak, you know, <laughs> and then you have the faculty member who will uh, come to you and, you know, try to help you out and navigate through, you know, all your situations and, you know, ask you if you're okay, and if you can't, if they can't, doesn't, don't really understand what you were trying to say, you know, you know, pull you to the side, call somebody else, and try to, you know, see what they can do to help you out, and, and all that, so definitely, you know, big, big, big um, thank you to the entire um, faculty that was there while I was there for my entire two years. You guys did so much for me, and I know as well for the other kids that were there, and as kids, we didn't realize that, but as adults, uh, again, I'm speaking for me, my siblings, and uh, most of the, of the kids that were there at that point in time. You know, thank you for all you did and uh, the work, hard work that you put out there for us. You know, definitely as adults, we we recognize that. A lot of us do recognize that. Great, great. With us. Yeah, that's something that I um, feel as though a lot of alumni recognize, especially after they graduate. You know, they they go through high school. Um, and they go through college, you know, and during those times, you can, you know, really feel like you're just a number in the right. system, you know, versus an individual. Um, you know, I felt that way, um, you know, when I was um, at Fairfield Prep somewhat and, and definitely when I went to Fordham, um, even though I was part of student government and played football, at the end of the day, I was in a big lecture hall of 200 students, exactly. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> um, you know, professor didn't know my name until, you know, I had to take the extra step, you know, um, um, most likely when I was trying to pass the class, you know, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> but, you know, I think that just goes to show, you know, how important, you know, again, the relationship building is, um, especially for a young individual. So imagine, you know, feeling that love that you felt starting at pre-K and having that love all throughout, you know, until you graduate eighth grade. Um, I think that, you know, just in your two-year period, you know, having such a great impact and influence on you, um, I think about our younger students um, that are still going through that process, you know, still receiving that love, that care, all of the nurturing and education that they need to become, you know, in fact, hometown heroes one day, <laughs> you know? So um, I, I just think that's awesome. Yes. So, <clears throat> so we are approaching um, our 45 minute mark here. Um, again, I, I just wanted to thank you. Thank the attendees watching this seminar. Um, I wanted to dive into some of the questions that they have. Um, I want to make sure that we have pl plenty of time for that. So um, without further ado, um, I will, now begin to look at the questions. I will start with the Q&A box. Um, and here's a question actually from our beloved Mrs. Donnelly, <laughs> who is now uh, retired. This is her first week of retirement. So um, wishing her a, a, a very um, relaxing week. <laughs> um, she asked, as a student athlete, what was the hardest part of staying focused on your grades? hardest part um big question athlete. big question that is a big question you no know, because, um, because we have a lot of students nowadays that are so involved in in, in sports right. or, or or theater so big question. right and, uh the first thing honestly the first thing that popped out of my head i, I just didn't want to blur it out there and uh but um <laughs> again going into you know even in middle school 
but especially in high school and college, you know, because the older you get, you know, the bigger you're an athlete or he's an athlete or he's a cool person, the bigger it gets. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of, at times, you might be distracted, you know, with the fact that, you know, here I am an athlete, I'm doing so well, um, and not focusing so much on your schoolwork, you know, putting more time into, into your athleticism and not so much into your schoolwork. And these are these are things that are again as again as a young adult, you know, I've done throughout my years in school, mm -hmm. and uh, I know a lot of other, other people have done. So the hardest part would be, you know, how, how do you balance that? You know? How do you balance, you know, playing a sport or sports and also your schoolwork, especially in, in environments where, um, you know, the sports that you might be playing, you know, are so popular in your school. You guys, you know your whole team is loved, you know, and, and uh, you put a lot of time into getting better and, you know, getting your team to succeed. And because that's very important, you know, that again, winning and, you know, as a team, as a school and being recognized for that. But how do you balance that? You know, how do you go from, you know, all right, this is what I got to do, but here I got to go back tomorrow, you know, study for this exam and pass it, you know, so learning that, you know, that curve where, you know, all right, you know, I, I mean, I put too much time into this, but also enough on this one. So to me, that was, that was in a way, um, my hardest um, challenge, because there came a point where I tried so hard to exceed in what I was doing, because, uh, <laughs> and for instance, in high school, I did, I played soccer, and I did track and field, and uh, I started track and field just as a joke. One time, the track and field coach asked me, wow, I see you can run. How about you come and run with us one time and I, I i went in and i signed up just to go to one meet and i ran and i think i, I came out third or it was third or fourth and i was so excited out of 10 people and i was like i'm doing it again and i did it to, to the next the following <laughs> meet and the following meet i came out second and i was like oh i'm definitely sticking to this and uh again i, re I really worked hard at it pushed me to my junior year. i got to the swc's and states with that okay. and uh, but I started slacking a little bit of my schoolwork, you know, schoolwork mm. wasn't as good because you get time, time, I don't want to study. Let me just go practice. Let me just go mm. run with mm. my friends, you know, also the after school program where, you know, you guys are all practicing, you know, you being cool with, you know, all the guys and, you know, it's all fun. You don't have to strain your mind to think about how to find, you know, find me the limit of this or that, you know, <laughs> but, uh, then, you know, again, I'm very, I'm very grateful that, um, I was able to catch myself, um, in on in time and uh you know, come back and you know tell myself hey you know you need to you know put a little bit more focus into this you know i do love <laughs> i love the sports that i did i love you know i love every minute of it but also at the end of the day you know you got to think about your end goal and you know i thought about my end goal you know i love it i love what i did my, what i'm doing i was good at it but at the end of the day i didn't see myself 10 years down the line playing sports in the biggest stadium in the world, you know, I loved it. But being an athlete at the end of the day, um, you know, playing in the NFL or, you know, track or the Olympics, it wasn't for me. So for a lot of the kids out there, young, young kids out there, you know, you really have to think about it. You love it, you get good at it. And, you know, a lot of us, you know, we want to become um, sports icon, but um, please, please, please do not forget, you know, you can only play sports for so long. You know, the average person doesn't even get to 35 and still playing sports, you know. You can only play sports for so long. You got to, you got to. Also, as you go along, especially this young in life, you have um, a lot of opportunities to, you know, make changes in your life, which directions you want to go with it. You know, definitely chase your dreams. You know, if you want to be an NBA player, chase your dreams, but also, also make sure to have, you know, what are you going to, what do you plan on doing after the NBA, you know? Or what do you plan on doing if that doesn't pan out for whatever reason? You know, you always want to be prepared and ready. So that's why, an edu you know, pursuing that education, you know, maintaining good school record and, you know, also our learning is very important because, you know, as much as you want to do this, sports can only go for so long in your life. After that, you got to immerse yourself into, you know, into other things to continue to be productive in your life and do, you know, things that you want to do in life. That's why mm -hmm. you know, school is so important going forward and learning how to balance that. And it's also good as young as, as young kids because you know in life there are going to be a lot of things you know that are becoming going to be coming coming at you at once. So, you know it also teaches you how to manage a lot of different important things in your life at once. 
Perfect. <clears throat> Perfect, man. Thank, thank you so much for that. You know, as a, as a fellow student athlete, I can definitely relate to that. Um, or in a washed up student athlete, I call it, <laughs> um, you know, I, I can definitely relate to that. It's, it's not easy. Um, you know, I knew that I did not <clears throat> want to, you know, join the NFL. Um, and I wouldn't have had the opportunity anyway, because I have an egghead and I have too many concussions. So, <laughs> you know, so, so I'm more than happy that I had my engineering to fall back on. Um, so another question that was asked um, from uh, Miss, Mrs. Gerald, actually, um, who is uh, part of the faculty at CAB at the St. Augustine campus. She asked, in what way would you encourage staff and involved parents to assist with another student who has a very limited English proficiency. So a very similar situation uh, to you and your sisters, how would you encourage parents um, and, and staff to further assist? Involvement, you know, it's encouraging the, 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 the young kids to, you know, stay involved one way or another. You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to be in a choir and play sports. Or, you know, again, and for me particularly, my involvement, you know, was really, you know, staying at the after school program, you know, you know, I hated it. I hated being there till 5 p.m. every day. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it helped me a lot. Again, I got to meet a lot of people. It also helped me practice, you know, my English and practice in the manner that, you know, for the most part, I just sat there, you know, as young kids, you know, learning a different language. A lot of times we don't want to speak. <clears throat> we sit there, just, you know, you just observe, you know, mm. how people speak, you know, how, how, you know, how they interact with each other. So involvement um, and uh, always being there in whatever they might need, um, being very patient with them is very, something very, very, I'd say very important because you don't, uh, you know, I don't think I would have been, I, I would have made it the way I did had I had this pressure behind me, you know, listen, you've been here for three months now, you got to know how to say this and that, you know, a lot of us learn in different ways, you know, again, it took me about a year to actually comprehend for the most part when somebody spoke to me. And it took me about two years to get comfortable with actually speaking. And it took me another year and a half or so to actually, you know, improve my English to the point where, you know, if I said something, you wouldn't exactly pick up on my accent right then and there. It'll take a couple mm -hmm. minutes for you to actually pick up on it, you know. So, you know, everyone learns differently. You know, every every every, every child is different, you know, and, you know, as staff and as fa staff and fa faculty members, I believe, you know, it is important to take the time to learn each children, you know, you know, in their own ways and then, you know, have them, you know, also take the time to, you know, learn and understand about you and then be patient with them and, you know, slowly, slowly and um, um, in, involve them in you know, their environment around them. And that way they can grow and learn and become who they can become in their own future. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you for that. Um, you know, thank you for being open and, and transparent with that question. You know, that's something that um, our students do face as well, you know, from time to time. We right. do, you know, find, find students that speak, you know, little English or have families that speak little English. So um, I believe that it's very important, you know, especially growing up um, in Bridgeport to have that support. Yep, it can be very tough, you know, coming <clears throat> At home, for 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 my siblings and I, we were told, you know, once you go to school, you speak English. If you can't speak it, you'll figure it out. But once you come back home, I don't want to hear English, just French. And we thought to ourselves, isn't that counterproductive? You know, I, why? What's the point of it? Because we're trying to learn English. Why don't you? And you know, my mom said to us, you know, because you'll forget how to speak French. And we just thought it was the most nonsense thing ever. And now here we are. We still speak French, but uh, I know of uh, cousins of mine that no longer speak French. You know, you'll speak oh, wow. to them because you know they again they come home, speak English, go out there, speak English, and, and you know they, it, it didn't work. So a lot of these you know, of these uh, children go home. You know they speak. They might speak a different language at home, and then they come back, and it might slow down the process of learning. But at the end of the day, it's, it, it, it's, it, it balances it out a little bit because, you know, here it is, they're learning, but they're also um, keeping track of their own native language, you know. They're cool. not losing track. And that's something very real uh, for somebody, for somebody that speaks uh, multiple different languages. That, that's somebody very real, something very real that actually takes place 
Uh, if, you, if you put so much into trying to learn one, you actually might, you know, get to the point where you completely forget to speak to the other. And, and I've witnessed that with my sibling. We speak to our, some of our cousins sometimes and we'll transition into French and they just respond in English. And we're like, oh, I say something in French. And like, I don't know how to say that in French. And we're just like, wow, how do you not know French is literally your native language, but they don't know how to speak French anymore. You know, and uh, it, it, it's always good to, you know, if, you know, if those are things that growing up, they can keep together with them. It's very good and important because it's, it's good to, again, be able to interact with people from different cultures and different languages. And as a faculty members, you know, you know, again, not every faculty member out there speaks, you know, more than one language, you know. So, you know, again, just being patient with the, with the children. Every child is different and just like, you know, going with it, you know, one step at a time and also communicating with the parents. I know at times, you know, um, it could be difficult to communicate with the parents because a lot some some children might come single family households and mom or dad might not always be available to come around and, you know, have that communication with the teachers. Mm -hmm. So um, I know it can be a little difficult at times, but again, just that patience and going step by step with them, you know, it, it really makes mm -hmm. it big. You know, maybe not right then and there, but in the long run, um, th these are things that make big difference. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have another question from our executive director, Ms. Angela Poland. Um, she says, being new, being so new to the school, to the country, to the culture, uh, your memories have transitioned. Um, they they could have been negative, but clearly you have some fond memories. Um, and she would like you to share some of your best memories from Cab. Some of my best memories from Cab, right then and now, uh, playing dodgeball. Oh, you know, but playing dodgeball was my thing because again, um, I, I like playing sports and. To me, that was one of those moments where, you know, I could just immerse myself into something that I loved and I was good at it and everyone had fun at the same time, you know, no one sat there and not doing anything. Um, also, having participated, been a member of the choir, you know, those are things I remember up until almost my senior in high school, I thought I never spoke about it to anyone that didn't go with me to cab because I thought it was an embarrassing thing as a guy to be part of the choir. And I'm sorry, Mrs. Dolly, I know I came with you to church every Sunday <laughs> and to part of that choir, but for the longest time, I thought I was embarrassing. And uh, now looking back at it, you know, I just think uh, it was the most absurd thing ever again. Those are my, one of my best memories, you know. I got out there, did my thing again. I, I'm not Whitney Houston. I don't have the best, you know, highest voice. But, you know, I did my thing out there. I sang. I enjoyed <laughs> doing it. And Mrs. Donnelly got me to join the Sunday choir. Um, and I ended up doing it. And I did it all throughout um, high school as well, up until I moved to PA for, for college. And I loved it. Those, those are one of my best memories, you know. Um, things that, at the time, I thought were, again, not the cool thing to do. Um, that's why I'm really, really pushing and hoping a lot of these young kids out there, you know, for you um, kids, you know, deciding what to do. If there's something that you enjoy, but you, you think, ah, that's not the cool thing to do, you know, don't worry about that. Do what you love. You never know if you'll get a chance to do it again. And, you know, these are memory, memories that to me, I enjoyed. I really I loved a lot. Um, getting out of class early just to go practice, you know, and with the choir. <laughs> skipping the last class at the end of the day just to go practice you know those are little tiny you know little tiny things that you know as a young kid you know at the end you go you grow with them you're like wow you know i really treasure these moments mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know these are things things very important you know to me growing up you know it's a little tiny bit of pieces and then they come together um and uh again this actually was one of my worst again not the greatest experience for me but which turned out to be again one of my best memories uh, we all went to church as a school and uh, we were reciting the Hail Mary and I signed up for it because again, I just wanted to do things to get out of class. And I got in front of the, uh, in front of the whole class. At the time I didn't speak any English. I didn't know how to say Hail Mary. So I just sat there in front of the whole class and I mumbled. And it was the most, to me, I felt so embarrassed with myself. And I remember I walked down and we walked back to campus and uh, Miss Rain at the time, it was a sixth grade teacher came up to me and she said to me, you know, you have a very, you're a very nice kid. You have a very, very nice um, um, heart and you will do great things in life. And just 
just that, you know, just that little sentence her and I exchanged, that she exchanged with me because I didn't even know how to speak, but I knew what she was saying. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. that, those are memories. And again, from a faculty member that, that, that stuck with me, you know, here I was, I thought I did the worst thing ever. I just sat there for 30 seconds and mumbled in, in front of the entire school and the school knew it. But the school pretended, you know, kept it skeptical. But here comes this teacher and, you know, just said that one sentence to you. And, you know, you go home and, you know, it sticks with you. As a kid at the time, you just worried that you messed up. But growing up, it sticks with you, you know. It impacts you in certain ways, the way for me, the way it impacted me, you know. Here was, she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to leave her class because I was in seventh grade. She didn't have to leave her sixth, leave her sixth grade class to come and say that to me. But she did anyway. And uh, that's something that stuck with me growing up and, you know, pushed me to go forward. and. Uh, yeah, those are a few memories of mine from there that I treasure to this day. Perfect. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, those are certainly great memories. Um, no I'm sure you're not, you know, the only alum that has very fond memories as well. Um, you know, I, I have a lot of fond memories, you know, from being there from pre-K all the way to eighth grade. Long time. Uh, it is a long time. <laughs> um, great. Thank you. So, Let's see. We don't have a question, but we have a message from Brad Evans, who is our president of the board. Um, very good gentleman, um, great mentor of mine as well. Very wise and knowledgeable. He says um, that he's proud to know you and your motivation and perseverance in accomplishing your goals is inspirational. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. Thank you very much. Again, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, to have this discussion with you. Um, I am honored. And again, thank you to the Dawson's and Bridgeport for having me. And uh, again, if I can help in any way, hey, you know how to reach me, you know. Perfect. I won't be too far. <laughs> thank you, Kenny. Well, one last question for you from myself, um, just to leave the students with something. What is some advice that you have for uh, kids transitioning from, from eighth grade to high school? get involved again just get involved you know get involved socialize and uh you know those through those through those um um interactions you'll learn a lot from one another and also individually as a person it helps you grow it helps you um discover yourself and what mm -hmm. kind of path you want to take with yourself because once we all once you all become juniors in high school you know you're going to be making big decisions you know wait you know you know what do you want to do with your life going forward because in a year or so you'll be done with high school you know and uh those are really major important decisions that a lot of us when we, when we get to that point such as myself we're not sure exactly but uh you know interacting with others on you know whether it be students other students and teachers taking mm -hmm. parts of clubs and uh, again i did another thing that i thought wasn't a cool thing was being a member of the drama club and uh, i ended up being a mm -hmm. member of the drama club my junior and senior year, and i loved it I'm so proud of that I've been a member of that and to That's this day awesome. I'm about it. So again, being involved and I learned a lot being in there and uh, involvement, you know, brings about um, some sort of experience and knowledge. So again, knowledge, knowledge is something very important you want to take with you in life. You know, every day that you wake up, you know, how, how can you be more knowledgeable in certain things, you know, interacting with one individual might help you learn about them. You know, they might come from also a different background, a different culture, and you can learn about that culture. And, you know, use that going forward in whichever way that might be useful <laughs> in the community around you. So involvement and interaction, you know, definitely a very important thing, creating relationships, a lot of them, which can be very um, meaningful in, you know, each and every one's of our lives. Of course, of course. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Kenny Fan, Hometown hey. Hero. This is episode two of our Hometown Hero series. Um, with guest speaker, Mr. Kenny Fan, He did a fantastic job. Um, I hope to have you back here in the near future. And I hope that you're right. able to come and visit CAB and, and um, uh, see our students firsthand. Um, so if there are no further questions, um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for episode three um, of our Hometown Hero webinar series that will be uh, towards the end of July. Um, we're going to try to keep these um, at the last Thursday of every month uh, just to have some uniformity. Um, so thank you all for participating. And Kenny, thank you again for sharing all of your stories.
Thank you, Tony. Thank you very much. Of course. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks.